welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host this week, as always, is... Bonjour, I'm Namio. Hooray! And, oh yes, another week. And, of course, another week with my phone running low on battery as I try to turn it off. Because it's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but also happening this week, uh, we have more more uh, um, 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 Think of the Children outrage, as I like to call it. Oh, really? Yes, because Brad and, and Lucas had, had a little scene. Oh, yeah. for fuck's sake, really? Yes, because people are like, we shouldn't have to see this on daytime TV. Yeah, well, uh, have... Ha- okay, there have been way, way more explicit stuff between heterosexual couple, couples. I mean, it, come on. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and if uh, those that want to use the Bible to, to try and justify their homophobia in this case, um, most of them are unmarried. Yes. So yeah, it's just just you're just a little little hypocritical there, guys. Just 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 a little, just a little. So I am proud to announce that as of the last time I looked through the the official General Hospital page, there seems to be more support for the uh, gay tri- love triangle story. Because it's story. adorable. It is. It is pretty awesome. It is like yes. And, and yes, we're bringing it up first because one, and what pisses me off the most, so it's gotta get that out of the way. Yeah. And it does. It's relatively small in relation to everything else that's been happening over the past week. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's a small thing. And it even extends, even even the you know the whole you know Luke is coming back and learning that Julian is his father. Julian didn't know. Not only did not know he had children, but one of them is gay. So we, we got to see that, and it, admittedly it was towards the end of the week. And, and again, it really, while it has a bearing on Jordan and Lucas as characters, it really didn't play into much of anything else this week, so I feel we can talk about this right away. Yeah, De- it definitely. Because, uh, and oh man, like... <laughs> <laughs> Lucas just came out, you know, he accidentally runs into Julian in in the graveyard and just pulls out the I'm gay card right away just to fuck with him, and I loved it! I like it, but I've also, also got to give Lucas some shit here. I mean, I, mean I, I like the fact that he's out and he's proud. Great. I love it, but at the same time, the way Julian was reacting to it, it seemed to be more like he was just kind of shocked, and, and no, it wasn't what he was expecting. Yeah, maybe he did have some different expectations for how Lucas would have turned out. I didn't see any resentment or disappointment in his eyes. It seemed like, okay, he is genuinely... He was, he was just shocked. really, really shell-shocked. Uh, yeah. I but, mean, you know... I mean, it's like, hi! The man just real you know, the man just learned, you know, within the past six months that not only does he have a daughter, he has a son that he never even knew about. Uh, and now find out, okay, he's all grown, okay, cool. And he's gay. That's a lot for him to process, given his background. You know, so and, and Lucas Lucas, I love you. Uh, oh, and, and I get to use this. Lucas, darling! I understand your frustration. I understand where you're coming from. I really do. But give Julian a little slack. Please. Yeah. <clears throat> See, I, I disagree. Because <clears throat> Lucas has already decided at this point that uh, he's not particularly interested in having a relationship with Julian. Mm-hmm. And so that is a great way to just fuck with him. Yeah. Which- and... <laughs> and it was very effective. And then, you know, I thought that he w- did a fantastic um, just kind of twisting the knife by saying, you know what? I was born this way. I don't have a choice. You made a choice to be a mobster. Do you really think that being a mobster, or, or do you really think that being gay is worse than being a mobster? And Julian was silent. 
Yeah, that that is a point. <laughs> yes. So you know, I I I have to say I'm I'm totally I am totally in Lucas's corner. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I would probably be more so if Julian just came right out and was a bastard about it, but he wasn't. <laughs> And, 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 and I'm actually defending Julian <laughs> Jerome. How about that? <laughs> but but Julian wasn't a bastard about it. He, he's like, what, 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 what? You know, kind of more confused and shell-shocked. And yeah, Lucas, as you were saying, yeah, he, you know, doing it to get under Julian's skin and twist the knife. But yeah, I honestly don't think somebody should use his sexuality that way, whether you're gay or straight or, that, or otherwise. That, I don't think. That's, yeah. But, Individual choice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> I, 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 got a, I finally got to make a callback to a Nostalgia Critic joke that fits! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I might even actually name the episode Lucas Darling. Huh? I, I might do that. If you're, watch, if you're watching or listening to it, you'll know whether I did or not. <laughs> okay, so... Let's see what else has happened this week. Now that now that we've got that out of the way, um, Victor Cassidy. I I am loving this character. It, it, it is good to see him back. He's pretty after, creepy so far. Yeah, creepy, but but not so creepy as to where to where he's like you know just evil. You know, he's he's just. I I understand his motivation. He wants to bring his family back from good or for ill. You know, they are his family. Helene and Stavros are his family. For good or ill, he, he you know, he feels a sense of loyalty to them. Which I, I think is something that most castines I've noticed do tend to have. So So, you know, I mean there there is that admirable thing. And he has he ends up having a DVD to show Robin, you know, because she's asking for proof about about how they ha supposedly have Jason alive and on yeah. ice. Uh-huh. Because we all know everybody wants people... It, it's actually kind of a 50-50 kind of split from what I've seen. Some people want Jason to come back. Some people don't want him to come back. And it's just, you know what? If, if they bring him back, just please, Steve Burton. You know, wait wait until Burton's done with Young and the Restless and then bring him back. Yeah, that that was uh, you know, I I didn't actually get to see um, this week's this past week's episodes until Friday because my life has been weird. Um, <clears throat> but I did see like all of the buzz that was like, okay, he's just signed with Young and the Restless. Why is his photo showing up on General Hospital? And once I saw the episode, I'm like, actually, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Because they don't actually know when Kimberly McCullough is going to be available to come back. Mm -hmm. So they can, you know, negotiate both her uh, and, uh, you know, Jason at the same time, you know, a year or two down the road. I mean... Yeah. And not only with them, but also, uh, you know, the, the actors who play Helena and Stavros. Yeah. And along with maybe any other Cassidy's, they may have deep frozen somewhere. <laughs> who knows? I mean, I know Helena has an illegitimate daughter. Who know how? Who's to say that she wasn't that, that she wasn't like saved after nearly dying because while well, her mother shot her. Yeah, that's that's a story I'll get into a little later. But you know, and and even going back as far as eighty one. I mean, who's to say that there wasn't somebody from the World Security Bureau even back then? who had just slipped into, like, the lower ranks or whatever of Cassadine Island and not only saved Mikos, but also Tony as well. Mm -hmm. who's, who's to say they didn't do that? This is the kind of ass pulley stuff that they do in sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, you know, I mean, the Cassadines, how were they brought in? Oh, yeah, science fiction. <laughs> Which is great. Oh, so, so, okay, so, so Victor... And Victor and, and uh, Spencer, I, I love the, their scenes together so far. You know, he gives he gives Spencer a little Fabergé egg to give to, you know, the girl of his dreams. Of course, he's going to want to give it to Emma. Because there's oh, no other little girls in the world other than Emma Drake. Nope. nope. <laughs> oh, but um, 
Yeah, and and because of this, and, and somebody had asked at one point on one of the groups I post on, um, you know, when um, when Spencer goes to Emma's house to give her the Fabergé egg, people were like, well, wait, who's that guy with him? I was like, that's his driver. <laughs> that's his driver, you assholes. <laughs> he's a Cassidyne. Of course he's going to have a driver. Mm-hmm. If your last name is Cassidyne or Quartermain, you're going to have a driver. Uh, uh, Corinthos, even. Yeah. You know? You're related to one of them, odds are you, you can have a driver. <laughs> but because of that, uh, Spencer noticed that Victor was at Emma's house and he's like, what the hell is he doing there? Yeah. Uh, of course, we know he's been trying to convince Robin to come and work her magic because, you know, hey, you know what? She was able to cure Luke Spencer's polonium poisoning, so yes. why not bring, you know, reanimate a few people, including one of her best friends? Yeah! And, 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 of, and of course, Victor... How he became that <laughs> but I guess he has yet to be revealed. Although, I, I, the, the, the reunion with uh, him and Nicholas, it made it seem like that Nicholas had known he had been alive for a while. He wasn't exactly shocked to see him. He's so, just like, oh, hi. Yeah, which <clears throat> tells me, it's like, okay, they, they've seen each other at least once or twice over the years. Maybe when Victor was in prison, because, you know, he was in prison after the whole, you know, the, the, the world freezing scenario. <laughs> so maybe, maybe Stavros took him to go visit Great Uncle Victor. You know? I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's possible. Or maybe Helena did. I don't know. Oh, but, um... <laughs> and we find out... Well, we find out pretty much what we have figured out as far as how Obrecht got, you know, got sprung and got pardoned and everything. Exactly what information she had for Victor. And, um, well, we also find out that Victor has the hots for her. Yeah! Like, that was hilarious. Yes! <laughs> uh, because, you know, and it's it's kind of funny to see the tables turned on Obrek because she was, like, super obsessed with Cesar Faison and, like, creepy about it. And now the tables have been turned and uh, Victor Cassidyne is obsessed with her and I'll be and I'll creep you about it. Yes, and it was kind of very uncomfortable. And it was kind of a, it was kind of funny because the reason that she was at Windermere was because she was trying to blackmail Brit into getting Nicholas to let her stay there, which Brit was like, "I don't want you around my child, woman." Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, no, although although I will I will say, uh, Obrecht, you know, she she can rock that suit. She can. She look she look damn good. So anyway, that that's a little non sequitur there. But yeah, uh, but once but Victor Victor makes his appearance. <laughs> oh, I love when Victor made it his made his appearance, and 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 you know Brit's being courteous and cordial to him. You know, can I get you anything? Obrecht's like that. I'm sure he has better places to be than here. And Victor's like tea, please. Yeah. <laughs> like damn straight. <laughs> That is just awesome. Oh, and about that time, you know, when 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 Victor and Obrecht are having their 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 little back and forth together, there is a rumbling in the catacombs because Heather Weber decided to take Carly down there, and the dumbass forgot her knife. Ugh. So she goes back to the stables, can't find... I, I think she thought about going back to the stables to find it. and get, Or otherwise realize, okay, it's not in the stables. And, you know, they're right below a house that has about 100 rooms. So, of course, she can't look through there. And she goes into despair. She does her breathing exercises. And then she realizes what we probably figured out about five minutes ago. Just go back to the Metro card and get another one. Which I was glad and they. She does. I was glad they explained that uh, where she's been getting, <clears throat> you know, all of the same knife. Yeah, which I think Ooh. I think it was kind of established a little bit more if if, if the viewers were paying more attention when uh, they actually found the original knife that they have in you know in evidence that as coming from the Metro Court kitchen. 
Did they? I I didn't catch that. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. Not, not everybody catches it. Sometimes some small details. You catch some. I catch some. <coughs> we all catch some. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So and and that was kind of neat. Just you know, she orders the dessert and then she skips out and everything. Takes the silverware. And one of the waiters is like, "Well, she's a horrible dine and dash. She didn't even have her. She didn't even have her booze." <laughs> well, and I'm just Heather. Heather just does not um, think things through, because I'm sure, like we know, the Metro Court has cameras. Not that anybody remembers that. Most of the time. Because. Olivia actually sees Heather, but Heather runs out so fast that Olivia's like, well, maybe I was having a vision. <clears throat> Which Julian helps confirm. <sighs> and she's like, oh, <clears throat> shit. And I just realized, if Olivia wanted to find out for sure, she could check the cameras. Yeah. But nobody is smart. No. It's like, God damn it, Olivia. Ah, uh, but Yeah. <laughs> And of course, on on um on on her return, she has the knife. Carly, <gasps> in the meantime, had gotten herself free, and and then of course she plays possum a little bit, you know, while while um you know you know while Heather's back and starting to gloat. And I'm just now realizing something. Wait a minute, did Carly remember to put the gag back in before Heather got back? Because <laughs> that's like, this is like it suddenly. Yeah, I think that was a uh, cut. Yeah. That was it. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a real show now. Yeah. But um, it, it's like one of those things. But then again, what proceeds to happen is a good fight between Heather and Carly. Heather is, 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 is an amazing good fighter, especially for her age. She doesn't look like it, does she? E I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like the two of them go back and forth, yeah. and, and Heather just bashes Carly's head on one of the shelves for a little bit, and then they they you know bang up against the the, the rafters there, which had already been creaking a little bit, you know, while Carly was freeing herself. But that fight just made it brought all down, and Heather is like, "What the hell did you do?" I'm looking at her like, "Bitch, you're the one who." <laughs> Against the thing. Oh, but everything is everyone else's fault, according to Heather. Of course. Or, or not, not necessarily everyone else's fault. Every, everything is Carly's That's fault. That's true. Carly is the root of all of her evil, and she was also seen by Mister McCreepy Face Cassidy. Yes. <laughs> Which that's got that's gonna that's gotta open up a big round of continuity, because he didn't seem to remember her. She was around in Port Charles at that time. But she might remember him. Which which would explain the look on her face. Like, oh shit. He, this this guy. Did, didn't he, like, try and freeze poor Charles back in the 80s? <laughs> oh. That, that would be interesting to see play out. Oh, god. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and even Victor's like, what a strange woman. Yes. Uh, yes, she, mm. yes, she is. Yeah, but, but yes. Okay, so going to over to Franco. <laughs> Franco's had a Franco. bad week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let, let, let's start from from the beginning of the week on this one. Let's see. Um, I know he's in jail. Yes. I, I, and, you know, Kiki goes to see him, talks to him. He admits to her, yeah, I kind of killed my mother, supposedly. And Kiki's like, uh, I saw her in Miscavige, and that's... Miscavige, yeah. And that's when Franco's like, wait. <laughs> yeah. And and when they talk about it, they, they discuss, and... Kiki decides to help him break out of prison. Well, out of jail. Yeah. And all it took is a paperclip. She provided the distraction. And Franco... Franco is caught... You know, he, he's, he's caught trying to get out. <sighs> manages to escape. Yes, because everybody sucks. 
I'm sorry, like, I was watching that, and I'm like, you know what, everybody sucks, and, because Dante actually shot Franco in the shoulder mm-hmm. to stop him, and then when Frank was like, well, I got shot, oh well, I'ma try again, Dante just stands there! I'm like, a real yeah. cop would have killed Franco at that point, but no! Yeah. Dante fucking let him get away because he's stupid. Yeah, and it also doesn't help that there was a conveniently placed guy just coming through, and of course, you know, you don't want to miss and accidentally hit an innocent. That's true. So, you know, it, it, it's stupid, but it's also justified, I think, uh, as far as not firing. <laughs> I don't know. It was just... Uh. Worst, worst police department in the history of fiction. <laughs> This. I don't know about the worst, but I'm sure there are worse ones out there. But but yeah, it, it's there's some ineptitude, and and the show realizes this, as we've seen what what was it a couple of weeks ago with Duke, calling out you know the police department. You know it's like hello lampshade. Yes. That's a very nice lampshade. Thank you Duke. But uh, <laughs> but then Franco escapes, goes to the graveyard to go to the grave that he buried Heather in. And finds the empty body bag, streams and rants. Which this is what, this is why I love <laughs> Franco. He's awesome. Like, like this, because he, he, he chew, I, I'm surprised. That, could they feed him any more scenery? <laughs> I'm sure they could try. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's he's raging about how the fuck did she get out? He turns and sees somebody, and he's and, just like, ah! And then we have Shirley Jones cameo. Yes. <laughs> And then they talk, and he tries to convince her he's a grave digger, and before that, a nice road trucker, and you don't have any calluses on your hands, and it's like, you know, you know, you don't necessarily get all the calluses on your hands when you're driving trucks, especially if you don't do much besides drive, especially if you're wearing gloves, you know? But then again, you know, then again, I, I mean, I've drove trucks for you know, about a year and a half, so maybe it just wasn't enough time for it. Yeah. But, uh, and and, it, and if he had thought about it, he would have done the same thing, but, you know, I don't think Franco had that particular knowledge set. Uh, <laughs> but it turns out that Shirley Jones knows exactly who he is, thank you to the newspapers, yes. and lets the police know where he is. Franco, being smart, <laughs> promptly escapes. Yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> And he goes to try and hide out at Daddy's base. Mm. Yeah, and, and he still hasn't doesn't anything about the bullet in his shoulder, as far as we can tell. Nope. Well, judging by the passing of time, he hasn't had a chance. That's true. But yeah, so he goes to Scott Baldwin and is like, "Okay, you know, this is what happened. I thought I killed Heather." But turns out I think she's live and she's framing me and could you please go to Miss Cavage because something is fishy. And I'm at this point I'm like, okay, Franco, you should have listened to Kiki. Because when you told Kiki this, she was like, We've gotta tell Dante this right now. And Frank was like, No, 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 no. And I'm like if you had told the police this, they would have been able to take more than one officer down to Miss Cavage and found out if Heather was really there. But yeah. because you're stupid, you decided yeah, not... let's, you know, commit another felony and escape and ask Scott Baldwin to go down there alone. Yeah, that is not one of your brightest moments there, Franco. No. Like, I, I, and I do... I mean, granted, it's, it's a little justified in that, well, the town kind of has a bias against That's him what I was gonna for say. I, very, very obvious reasons. I do understand his reluctance to talk to the cops, and especially to admit to the cops that, you know, he stabbed his mother. But if you're, you know, he keeps saying that all he wants is to find Carly. Well, your best bet at finding Carly at this point is is to tell the cops the truth so that they stop chasing you and start looking for Heather. Yeah, and then maybe 
Michael could actually, you know, calm his tits a little bit. God damn. Watch it. Yeah, Michael is just freaking the fuck out. You know, he comes he comes to visit Kiki because obviously Kiki gets arrested because they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, we're not buying your story for a second. Um, and, uh, you know, he's freaking out and, like, you know... And it basically gives Kiki a big old what the hell hero. Yeah. You know, why did you help him? And, and, and of course, she can't tell him that, you know, he basically defended Carly from his own mother. Yes. You know, by, by stabbing her a little bit. You know, she can't do that because, you know, it, 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 it's one of those things Franco doesn't want her to just, you know, it, it's basically a secret Franco wants her to keep for right now. And, and yeah. for obvious reasons, mm-hmm. you know. Granted, it led him to do something extremely stupid, but I, it, the reasoning is understandable. Yeah, of course, and then, you know, Michael doesn't really uh, understand irony either because he goes right from making all these accusations and being so, so upset at Kiki because she believes that Franco is innocent, and then he goes and talks to AJ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and... Who, who actually is innocent. Uh, who is in a very, very similar situation, except AJ is, is, is you know, he is, you know, proven it, not guilty. But the, the point being that everybody thinks that AJ is guilty, but Michael believes him that he's innocent. Yeah. And like, he doesn't... Mikey, do you even know? He doesn't, you know, <laughs> see that parallel there, because he's kind of got his head up his ass, but yeah. Yeah. I mean... Again, it's it's another one of those justifications. Yes, he's worried about Carly. I understand that, but you know, take a moment and and think, please. You know, okay, my mother is wor- my mother is missing. I'm worried as sh- worried as shit about her, uh, and 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 my girlfriend thinks that this guy who was a psycho killer person who who, who made all of our lives hell who did it, and and, and it's just. You know, you know, did he really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it's one of those things. And, uh, but AJ has been having an interesting time because apparently alcohol is magic. <laughs> it is restoring his memory. Yes. And, 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 and I, honestly, I'm not sure if it's so much the alcohol. I think alcohol is just incidental at this point. But he's remembering... Okay, first we know he remembers somebody was coming off the elevator. Now he's remembering... that. that now it looks like he's remembering Ava coming off the elevator. Finally! It's... And Finally. every viewer... Every viewer who's been watching since Connie was murdered... <laughs> you know, and, and, and Ava got to town and, and that whole thing went down. It's like, no fucking shit! <laughs> of course it was Ava. Of course. Ah, uh, who... Who also went to go visit Kiki? You know, she's like, "Well, let me hire you a lawyer." And Kiki's, and Kiki's reluctant at first, obviously. Yeah. You know, and flat out refuses her. But then they have a talk, and and then Kiki's like, "Okay, you know what? You know, hire Diane. Yeah. Just, just hire her." Oh, and and speaking of the jailhouse blues, hello, Silas. Yes. Even in jail, you are awesome and snarky. <laughs> uh, even. Even after the revelation of the will and Sam going, you know, just just jumping to conclusions right away, and just uh, <laughs> <laughs> Silas is just awesome. He still is. He is. And, and the thing is, Detective West, he has this idea. You know, now now that the will has been seen and found, and incidentally, it was it was delivered to the police. As it was evidence. Yes, and no one knows where it came from. It just showed up. Yeah. It's like, huh, wonder who sent it. Could it have been Ava Jerome? Or, as some people like to speculate, was it Silas's psycho twin brother who's not really dead? That would be hilarious. I would, l- I would love to see him playing more than one part. I would love that. That would be hilarious. Oh, yeah. And it's not like Michael Easton hasn't done this before. 
he originated Caleb and and uh, his brother. I forget his brother. I think his brother's name was Michael on Port Charles. You know, a vampire and a priest. Although they were technically two sides of the same person, but um, oh, multiple personalities. Oh yeah. Oh. And see. then and then on General Hospital, when when the actor came over from One Life to Live, he was playing. I, I think it was um, John, whatever his last name was from One Life to Live, as well as Caleb slash um, 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 uh, Stephen. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and he was killed, the other cop character was, you know, written off, and then now we have Silas. So, yeah, it's not like he hasn't done this kind of thing before. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> it, would, it would definitely be an interesting turn. And Julian comes in and, you know, he, he talks to Silas a little bit, says, yeah, I'm here for my daughter, type thing. Yeah. And after talking with him, he's like, okay, you know what, I, I, Sam, I'm going to help you. You know, and yes, of course, it's to curry favor with Sam, but, you know. Which he's very upfront about. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, you know what, I'm doing it for you. You know, whatever. <laughs> he gives none of the fucks. You, you, can, you can know this. So, um, because it's, it's obvious anyway. But you know what? If it works, and, and, and it even seems like you turn against his sister if it proves that she was the one framing him. Yeah. Yeah, which, admittedly, she would deserve it. Well, and even she, even she admits that, uh, you know, he would try and sell her out to get into Sam's good graces. Yep. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but we, we don't have to worry about that. You know, because eventually AJ's going to confront her, and, um, you know, once AJ remembers everything, and he's, there's going to be a confrontation, and the truth's going to come out. Sonny's not going to be happy. Yeah, that's going to be really interesting to see, because yeah. Sonny has already, you know, promised Kiki that he's not going to kill her mother. Yeah. But when it comes out that Ava not only killed Connie, but also shot Olivia. Mm -hmm. And framed an innocent man on, yeah. on the part of Connie. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it is AJ, you know, who Sonny despises. You know, that that's gotta that's gotta mean something. Yeah. I mean especially Especially if it all, it, all of it, all of his motivation for it would be for Michael, you know, at this point. But yeah, uh, and let's see what else. What else has happened along with the Jeromes? Was it? I want to say it was. I, I know there was a little bit between Julian and Alexis where Alexis does the cute, flustered, yes. awkward thing, and then they and, and then they make out a little bit, and uh, then she's like, "Okay, that's enough of that." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta say, Nancy Lee Drawn, she does a very good job. And, and and she makes it look just just kind of awkward and kind of sexy at the same time, and it's just very well done. Very, very well done. Oh <laughs> And and last time I last I saw of them one of the last times I saw them, they were down at the police station. Uh, I, I, you know, because it's almost time for Silas to be released, and they're like, okay, you know, you don't have any new evidence, which is where the will comes in, like suddenly will, and of course Detective West is like, well, this establishes motive, this establishes motive, even though, and as he's called, as people are saying, yeah, wives do that with husbands all the time, even rich wives do that with yeah. husbands all the time. That's not necessarily a good motive. It, it, it's it's not enough for a motive. Yeah. Uh, and that's all going on along with Franco escaping. <laughs> uh, and we also learn to to now to to spend the last half of the show going over to the hospital because shit's going down there too. Uh, <laughs> let's see. We we do we do have the Brad Lucas Felix triangle going on, and we also have Sabrina. Who Ed pretty much just confesses everything to Patrick. Yeah, well, and it's it's pretty great because, you know, 
Elizabeth accidentally lets it spill in front of Emma, and then Sabrina has to lie to Emma, which is when she's like, okay, this, this is not, this is not okay. And so she goes to Patrick, and she tells him mm-hmm. everything. And it went off a lot better than what, and, I guess what uh, she was expecting. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, he, the thing that he's most upset about is being lied to, oh, which yeah. is completely understandable. He has been lied to over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And, but on the, on the flip side, he does understand, uh, why that was her first instinct, uh, because yeah. Patrick is he pretty is. awesome. I mean, it, it's not like when Britt lied to him. She wasn't trying to not come between him and someone else. She was actually doing the opposite. So, you know, yeah. it's definitely... And for all of Sabrina's worry that she was going to be like Britt in this, you know, it, it's... It, it, it's... I, I'm, I don't know about unfounded, but it, it, it's, it's definitely at ease now, for sure. Because it's like... No, you were not like Britt was at the time. Yeah. And Britt, you, and Britt, for her part, she came and she talked talked things out with Patrick, apologized, and, and basically, you know, tried to make amends with him. Which I, I think is a good thing. I, I like. Yeah. I lo- I've loved how how yeah. Britt has grown from this bitchy character that everybody wants to like like slap in the face to this more sympathetic character. Who, yeah, she has done bad things. That a lot of people still want to slap in the face, yeah, but it's not really justified grown anymore. From her experiences. No actual honest to goodness character development. Yeah. So. And it's kind of interesting because when she's talking to Patrick, she was saying that, you know, what changed her was becoming a mother. And, you know, finally understanding that kind of that kind of love. And, you know, she makes the comment that, you know, if I ever lost him, I, I don't think I, you know, could handle it, basically. And Patrick's like, well, why would you yeah. lose him? So of course, we all know the answer now. Which, I, I admit, I, I still like, I, I kind of wish they didn't go in this direction. But they did, so, you know, then it's Dante and Lulu's. And we get the first on-screen sign other than, you know, that other characters can see is that he shares a rash with Dante. Or, or a, a, an allergy, rather. Yeah, he's, he shares a very specific allergy. He's, he's, a, he's allergic to latex and mm-hmm. certain fruits. And, of course, Elizabeth fills, uh, a, you know, fills a prescription for both of them. It, coincidentally, at the same time, and she's like, it's okay, it's... we need to get this tested. <laughs> get their DNA and everything. Felix yeah. manages to get... <sighs> well, and part of part of that was because Nicholas is a moron. Because he knows how hostile Elizabeth is towards Brit. And he still tells Elizabeth that uh, <laughs> that uh, um, Brad is not Ben's father and that Brit stole sperm from the yeah. hospital lab. I still don't know why he thought it was a good idea to tell Elizabeth that. Probably just because Nick yeah, was a bitch I, bitch. I, but, I, I, don't, I don't know what he was thinking. I, I don't even know if he was trying to do something honorable there, because that's Nicholas's thing. He tries to do the honorable thing. I, I, I you know, honor before reason, uh, I guess. And so... <laughs> So Elizabeth immediately is like, wait, that's what? Uh, And when she notices that Ben and Dante have the same allergy with the same prescription, she's like, okay, we got to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And she gets Felix in on it, even though Felix is like, well, you know, Brad is part of this too, and I don't really want to go against him, but... Felix is a kind of a sheep, and uh, this is very much going to be drama, and yeah. so he can't help himself. Uh. And so, and so Elizabeth goes to Windermere, pretends to make nice with Brit, 
and then steals Not Ben's just hairbrush. Any hairbrush, and meanwhile, family heirloom Felix... hairbrush from Victor. <laughs> yes. Uh. Uh, and uh, Felix is able to get a water bottle that Dante was using. So, and they're like, okay, mission accomplished. And I'm like, who are you going right, to get to run the test? We'll find out at some point, because that's where they were going to go yeah. do right then and there. Just, yep, we're going. Boom. <laughs> yep. Oh, lordy. Yeah, and of, and of course, Sabrina... When we, after Sabrina told Patrick the truth, you know she was she was in, in a in a bad place, and does she knew she had to tell Carlos, who naturally flipped out. We don't yeah. see this, which I guess might be the <laughs> best. Which leads Carlos to finally making contact yeah, that... with Julian, or at least as far as we've seen, and 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 Julian lets him. Yeah. Know, eases his fears, yeah, you know, you're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna take you out or anything, we understand, you know, or at least I understand, you know, and to lay low, because, you know, hey, Sonny, you know, you know, Julian, for, for as ruthless as Julian has been, he was very understanding to Carlos. So, again, yeah. there, there's, there's a point for Julian there as well. So, it looks like Julian... I, li I like how Victor, I, I don't remember if it was this past week or the week before, but Victor was saying things like, you know, it, it's not all, not necessarily all black and white. There are shades of gray, even among, like, the WSB and the DBX, Ooh. which is, it, it's it's basically the, obviously, the evil counterpart to the WSB. Or has typically been the evil counterpart to the WSB. Now the, now the WSB is the evil yeah, counterpart to the WSB. <laughs> oh, pretty much. So, but Victor... But, but, you know, regardless of what Victor was trying to accomplish there, he made a very good point. It's not all just black and white. There are, there are shades of gray. You know, and that's with pretty much every character on the show, ranging from Victor to, I mean, I mean even Mikos. You know, when he was on, when he was on, he was trying to take over the world. He, his, his aspirations, you know, he wanted to bring about world peace and, and help people. But where he fell was he wanted to do it his way, and he was going to intimidate people into going his way by, you know, threatening to freeze the world. Because he had the power to change, you know, the weather as needed. He, they concentrated on freezing because that's what they had available, I think. Or maybe it was all through just the carbonic snow substance. It was, it was treated like this miracle thing. But, um, but his motives, regardless of his actions, his motives... You know, they, they weren't necessarily just pure for the evil's motives, you know. He, he had a motivation. He, he wanted to bring about mm. world peace. And, you know, his, mm -hmm. his methods were completely wrong. So, and, and obviously so. And as his plan started coming more and more unraveled, as Robert Scorpio was caught, and then Luke and Laura were caught, you know, and then his brother walked into the ice chamber and got killed, because, you know sudden deep freeze does that to you. You know, he starts losing <laughs> it more and more and more and it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, fuck it all. You know. But, you know, he, he dived headfirst into madness. So, yeah. Whee! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, even Victor at the end, you know, he was convinced to kind of turn against Mikos a little bit. You know, to, you know, to just, you know, help him get Help stop Mikos from what he's doing. You know, granted, a lot of it was done at gunpoint, but <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> you, you know, Robert's using his words to to convince him to do it. And this is this is the same Robert. Uh, before they got on the boat, Victor had killed uh, Robert's uh, WSB partner, and at Ooh. that point, Robert had vowed revenge on the Cassidines. So yeah, so. To go from that to, you know, just talking him and convincing him to turn tail and, you know, have himself turned in or whatever, I, I think at that point said a lot for Robert's character at the time. So, mm -hmm. so that was that was definitely good. But it's, but yeah, but again, it, it's the whole gray thing. It's not all black and white. So so you know, again, from Mikos to Victor to to even Felix or Sabrina. Yeah. You know, even the kids. 
you know, and, and, and I mean not just the little kids, but you know, like also the teenagers as well. Mm. So, and, and even Sonny and Carly, which is why I can say, you know what, Sonny did this really shitty thing, and, and you know, like, like when he had Franco beaten up. You know, yeah. we, we, we slammed the fuck out of him for that. But on the other hand, when he, you know, when he basically outed Morgan and, and his stuff at their, you know, at their wedding reception, you know, I, 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 you know, I had to stand behind the man because, you know, he was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Probably in the, not necessarily in the right way, but he was doing the right thing uh, from yeah. what I saw. So, yeah, and, and so it's, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. Uh, what else? What else have we missed out on this week? Um, Morgan really misses Ava, and Ava really misses Morgan. Yes, and by the end of the week, you know, you know, Sonny and Morgan have a talk. You know, and he talks about, you know, they talk about heartbreak and everything, and Sonny tries to help him through it. You know, like a father should. Yes. You know, and, and that's that's a good thing. And then, you know, Sonny goes off to do something, take care of some business, and look who shows up. Oh, hi, mm -hmm. Ava. How is your set? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, you know, if, if Ava Jerome was a real person, that would be a really insensitive thing to say. It would be. <laughs> oh. Oh, God, but. Yeah, so of course, because she's in love with him, she can't stay away from him. It's almost like it's turning into a Romeo and Juliet type thing. I hope they don't die over this. It's like, Jesus. Oh. It's like, our families are at war with each other. <laughs> <sighs> oh, so, so, please don't go the Romeo and Juliet route. <laughs> Not with well, these two. Again, if Ava wanted to fix everything, all she would have to do is betray Julian, who she doesn't particularly give a fuck about anyway. Yep. And go ally herself with Sunny. Exactly. But she's not going to do that because that would be smart. Yeah. But we'll, we'll have to see. We will have to see what happens. Ugh. Man. So we've had Ava, we've had Morgan. Uh, did we cover everything Julian did this week? Because he just like popped up everywhere, it seems like. I don't even know. Popped up with Lucas, popped up with Carlos, popped up with Alexis and Sam, popped up with Silas, and it's like, he's like popping up everywhere, and, and he's still got the scars from being beaten up. <laughs> Which, nice touch on that one. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, I will say, nice, very nice touch. Oh, oh. so, um, yeah, let's see, um, um, um. What, what, what else have we missed? Did we miss anything else? Um, let's see. We've obviously covered Victor and Robin. And, oh! The aftermath, because Patrick did tell Robin that what, you know, that Sabrina told him the truth. Yeah. And Patrick just had this frustrating moment, and he just kicked the table and sees a picture of Jason, and Robin had to cover her yeah. ass. Which is understandable, but the reason she gave, you know, just, you know, thinking about him, you know, missing him, that sort of thing, it, it's, 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 one of those things, it's like, tell the truth as far as you can, which I honestly believe that, you know, Robin was thinking about him and missing him, you know, and wondering, you know, if he had been here, that sort of thing, you know, thinking mm -hmm. about him, you know, and I can honestly see that, and, and, and I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah. Well, she couldn't tell him, uh, you know, because if she did, you know, the WSB goons would, you know, take him out. You know, is that, well, uh, she's trying to be convinced into uh, going to revive him along with uh, Helena and Stavros. Yeah, I can't tell him that. Nope. Which, which if she ends up accepting, then, then, then that's going to be hell, trying to, trying to, you know, justify to Patrick and Emma why she has to leave. Yeah, and uh, I'm like, okay... I'm, I'm. I don't quite understand why Victor is telling her that she can't tell her family what's going on, because I'm pretty yeah. sure Patrick would not only understand, he and Emma would go with her. But I think it's mostly mm -hmm. they need to contrive something so that Patrick and Emma can stay and Kimberly McCullough can go. 
Yeah. And I'm like, this is this is kind of unconvincing for me. Because obviously yeah. I am the center of the universe. Um, and, <laughs> you know, even, even Robin's like, yo, I just got my family back. I'm not going to leave them again. You're crazy. And Victor's like, well, I guess that's too bad for Jason then. Yeah, that that's kind of. Uh, I'm like this. But, is, but hopefully, this is stupid. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I am hoping that the more Victor is around his family, especially around like Little Spencer and Nicholas, and 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 all of that, that maybe he'll he'll think, okay, you know, let her under, let her, you know, find some way to tell her family that's more closer to the truth. Yeah. Than, than just disappearing without a trace. But, you know, but, and Victor, you know, goes, you know, because Robin's like, what am I supposed to tell them? And Victor's like, uh, you know, nobody's life is perfect. I'm sure you can come up with an excuse for why, you know, why you're leaving. And then in, you know, the next scene with Robin, oh, that's when Patrick brings up the whole Sabrina is having my baby thing. And I'm like, yeah, which mm, telegraphing that unfortunately, much? Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately for me, it just seems like it would be out of character. For it Robin. does, which I'm like, it's it's just, eh. it's like, hi, out of character. No, let, let, let's keep her in character, or or at the very least, if you're going to change your character to that degree, make it justifiable, very justifiable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if, like for example, Patrick outright leaving Robin for Sabrina. That would be justifiable. And that would be out of character for Patrick as well. But, yeah. You know. Uh, this is, this is, you know, this is why I don't write for daytime drama. <laughs> I make too Exactly. <laughs> you and me both. Uh, or maybe I should. Maybe I should, anyway. Maybe make my own daytime drama. That would be hilarious. Uh, People doing smart things. A very short soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it wouldn't be that short. I mean, you could get drama out of smart writing. You know, but... Yeah, it, it would it would take some yeah. doing, and in and even though again, you know, we we talk about the show and we we do bash the writing, we do bash the cliches they use, we bash all the tropes they use, we bash the integrity of the characters in terms of you know what their decisions are as characters. Regardless of all of that, you know, it it is it is still very enjoyable, and I've been enjoying every Me minute too. of it. <laughs> I'm I'm glad you got so, me into you know, this show because it has been very much a lot of fun. Yes, you know, so it, it's it's one of those shows where it's not perfect. The writing is nowhere near perfect. The writing, when it's good, it's really good. But when it gets to its low points, then you just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, it's great material for critics and reviewers to look over. And if and if you're a reviewer out there who's listening to this and looking for some new material, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage it. Uh, you know, and 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 I even encourage you know if, if you're looking for things to review and you want to review soap operas or whatever, I highly encourage yes. it because I'm pretty sure there are similar writings on other soap operas out there. So you know, it, it, it's strongly encouraged. I think this is kind of a Thing that's not really covered in our sphere of reviewers, so so that, that uh, I wouldn't mind seeing more of it. I know they have the fans out there for it. <laughs> you know, General Hospital Facebook page, a million yes. plus fans. Surely we cannot be the only ones doing a podcast. I mean, law of averages would have to dictate there are other people. <laughs> uh, but yes, again. Encouragement for all any all shows. If, if if you guys are doing, if if there's any of the listeners out there who's doing a, a, a podcast like ours, whether it's for for this or for one of the other soaps, let us Ooh. know. We'll, we'll give you a shout out and give you give you a bump because that's what we do. And I'm working on trying to get a you know, guest or two for the show somewhere down the line. I'm not going to say who. Oh, excuse me. But, uh, but at least not until it's finalized, one way or the other. But. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to work on that. If there's a particular actor from the show, or, or even one of the directors or the writers on the show, somebody that's been involved with General Hospital over the years, that you would want to see appear on the show, you know, write in, let us know. Um, if you're, you know, leave a comment, whatever. 
and and we'll, I'll I'll but I'll do my best to get them on the show. Oh, so with that, we are going to get out of here for this week. And oh, this next week, I, I will admit I've already watched this coming Monday's episode. We're recording this on Tuesday, and <laughs> it's gonna be good, y'all. I, I can I can feel it in my bones. So. So I look, I look forward to the next episode now. <laughs> Very much so. So, um, anyways, if you want to uh, help support the show in any way, um, we do have advertising space Ooh. available through my Patreon page. That's because uh, with Patreon, you can you, you put your stuff up there and you ask for people who will pledge you for whatever project. Like, like some people do it per commission. Yeah. I do it per month because I don't want to break any of my patrons. So, and, and I put upwards of 12, sometimes more, things a month. So, yeah, I don't want to break everybody. But uh, for $20 a month, you can get advertising space on my site, RT Gomer Productions at rtgomer.com. And we actually have our first uh, $20 patron who, who we're, we're still working out the details about how she's going to advertise, you know, all, all of that good stuff. And that will be up as soon as we have all of that finalized. But, um, but I encourage you, if you have something you want to, you have something you want to promote on the site and you want to toss a little money at me, there you go, you know, $20 a month, get you some advertising space. And according to my research, it's some of the best pricing out there. So it, it's not going to be much cheaper than that for, for paid advertising. Oh, um, but, and, and even if you don't want advertising and you still want to support the show, I, I do accept any amount, um... And if you and if you do twenty dollars more and you decide against the advertising space, we'll work out something. Because I don't want you to just like <laughs> donate and not get something in return. <laughs> okay. So um, so anyway, uh, beyond, beyond the Patreon page, which I know I hoard out every week, but it, it's kind of I, I, I kind of need it and work it up to where it'll help keep the lights on. I would like that. <laughs> Uh, so it, it, it's becoming more of a necessity, but that's enough of my rambling about that. If you want to find my materials, you can find it on rtgomer.com, nerdvice.com, and all of my shows are now going up on YouTube under gomer 21 X, which also happens to be my Twitter handle. You can find well. me on Twitter uh, at, uh, at, at Naomi Washburn. You can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. And you can find me on Etsy at Nanio Stained Glass. Yay. Yay! So, <laughs> so, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next week. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio, signing off. <laughs>